so let, let me start by saying that um, I'd like to thank uh, the IMLS for funding uh, our project to study data science in libraries. Uh, so um, it's been a labor of love, not only for the people that are listed here, but I know many other people that participated in this uh, study to train librarians in data science um, to really give us uh, exposure to, to this. Um, and so uh, what, some of the things that uh, came out of our funded grant where we, we held a workshop and uh, we're close to, very close, we wish to, sh we actually wanted to share our report uh, at, at this talk, um, but at least we can present on some of our early findings for everyone. So you can uh, follow along. Um, so we framed initially the workshop uh, by, by um, around the national uh, digital platform. And, and so you know, really one of the things we, we thought was that uh, librarians really needed to know uh, how to ma manipulate, analyze, and manage data. It's, it's very crucial uh, for where we're headed. And, it, and, and we focused on two challenges, the skills gap, uh, where we were finding um, many librarians trying to do it ad hoc uh, training, so various programs that are out there, um, but sort of in an unstructured way. Uh, and then the other, the other uh, um, challenge was the management gap. Uh, and so management, just uh, not, not necessarily having the stories, the background, uh, to understand what was required for uh, their, their librarians to uh, employ data science in, in, in their libraries. Uh, as I mentioned before, we held a workshop with roughly 45 uh, people from various backgrounds, from public libraries to industry, uh, to librarians at different, uh, in different roles, to uh, you name it. Uh, we had, I think, at the end of, of the day, a very diverse uh, group. Uh, we put a lot of effort in, in determining who, who would come. And, and so we met over two days uh, just uh, discussing this challenge. And one of, one of the things that sort of stood out was uh, um, that data science didn't necessarily resonate with uh, many of the people there that um, really data savvy did, felt more comfortable about it, and it, it explained uh, the situation better that we, we really work across uh, a spectrum um, from having to know the deep statistical and software engineering skills uh, to the advocacy, the policy development, and the data management planning. Um, and then it really emphasized too these, uh, the roles uh, that not of, all of us can be a unicorn, but the, the shared uh, roles that we have from different perspectives that we're all in this game together and that that was something that shined through in in the workshop everyone sort of felt felt that way uh, we did a environmental uh, scan uh, we brought together some of the some of the bigger training initiatives out there from data scientists training for librarians to library carpentry to uh, data science and visualization institute for uh, librarians which is at NC State and uh, ANS, which is the uh, Australian National Data Service, uh, they're interesting. They ran a national uh, program to uh, help train librarians, uh, and, and the, the name of the program was 23 Race Research Data Things. So it was an interesting, and then on the other side we had use cases uh, where, uh, for instance, at uh, University of Houston, uh, we had one librarian talk about how they were trying to use data science in, in collections uh, development in their analysis uh, uh, for collections. So uh, one of the things we came upon was this uh, multifaceted framework. Uh, after we, we uh, had the workshop and we looked at all of our notes after the, the damage was done, uh, we looked at our notes and tried to uh, provide a structure and uh, we came upon these four facets uh, around sort of the organizational managerial structures uh, the stakeholders, researchers, IT students, administrators, public uh, stakeholders can go on a little bit. And then um, professional and informal skills training and data savvy services, uh, data science services. Uh, and and uh, we grouped them together so the structures and the skills training was um, one section that I worked on uh, with my colleague Matt Burton. Uh, and, and just to 
just to briefly go over some of the things that we saw under those facets, uh, the drivers, uh, one thing was, is this apparent from Cliff's talk that we're uh, living in a more increased, an increasingly computational environment. Uh, uh, so programming, uh, analysis, other things like that are becoming uh, um, de facto in, in the sciences, or, well, they already were, but in other fields, it's just becoming uh, um, the trend. And so we had some people there talking to us about uh, data pipelines, uh, Jupyter Notebooks, that particular example was a contractor working for the Library of Congress uh, that librarians need to, to account for this. Uh, then uh, the recognition of library a, as a resource for data management, that, that's uh, come on strongly with all the funder mandates. Uh, that's, that's, uh, that's been something we've been living for, with for a while um, and becoming seen as a resource uh, to our researchers and other people in, in the academic setting. Um, and then uh, this belief, I think, that libraries, uh, that we're not just a service provider, that we're a collaborator, um, that we can be, we can be collaborators on, on these research products, be more embedded. Uh, and, and then um, one thing that came sh shine through is the shortage of data savvy employees and library workforce. So that, you know, that, that again points to the fact that librarians are, are reaching, trying, trying to take some of these informal training programs. And uh, another thing too is that we're competing with uh, the, just the overall workforce that these skills are in demand. Uh, we, ha we found some barriers, so our branding, again, like the traditional library versus the, the seen as a data science resource. Uh, formal LIS education, I guess the key is they're formal, uh, that it's not adaptable. Um, uh, you know, some, some libraries are actually already responding to this, but um, that, that shined through. A lot of people were commenting on the fact that library schools really needed to gear up and, and uh, um, develop these skills in data science. Uh, the incentive structure, so this, this is something, um, you know, that, that uh, uh, Again, librarians are looking for to their management, the purpose, what, what are the goals behind this maybe. Also the resources, right, because this takes uh, a, lot of, a lot of effort uh, to train. Uh, and then infor information overload, uh, so too many tools, that's, uh, that's something actually we work with uh, often in libraries, so something we shouldn't uh, be necessarily be, be overwhelmed with. Um, and then the, the drive-by workshops, so the boot camps are, uh, happen often, but then librarians can come back to their organizations and they can't really uh, implement or practice what they've learned or they're speaking another language uh, that the other librarians can't necessarily understand. They, have, they don't have a shared experience. Uh, and then, um, again, leadership, we, leadership needs stories to understand why, why we need to do these things. But I think I emphasize the brick wall. It's I hear often from people who go to these training programs that um, you know they come back and, and they can't really do, implement what they what they want to do. They they uh, you know they hit that brick wall. And I, I think this quote uh, speaks um, a million. Uh, learn new skill. I want to learn new skills, but I still need to do my old job. That's one of the tensions that we still um, face. So. Uh, we had some exemplars of uh, what we thought uh, were good examples So, training, for training programs. Uh, I mentioned the 23 research data things. There's software and library carpentry, which is a lot of libraries are starting to uh, adopt. And um, data scientist training for librarians, which is being run in Copenhagen now, but it started in, in, um, in, at Harvard. Um, and then uh, our local NC State uh, Data Science and Visualization Institute for Librarians. And this will, this will be uh, held, actually there's an announcement going out tomorrow about that training program. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think those, especially those last two programs, uh, they, they, they follow along the research life cycle, so they really give exposure to the librarians. Um, to, to gain uh, experience in, in these spaces. Uh, and then um, I mentioned some people, um, Lauren DeMonte, uh, who is at NC State, is now at uh, Rochester. Uh, she, she, uh, she presented at the meeting and talked about her work with uh, graduate students in, in teaching sort of Python 
uh, data analysis in the makerspaces, and it was a, it was a very compelling um, case of how we, we, we should be working together. So she, she is definitely an exemplar. And then Victoria Steves was mentioned by um, Sloan, by Josh Greenberg, who, who was there with us uh, as, as another example of a librarian that's embedded in, and working with researchers on reproducibility. Uh, and I, I, I've never met Vicki, uh, but I follow her on Twitter and she, she's uh, tweeting amazing things. So, um, so I, I will, Move on to my colleague, Bonnie. Okay, hi everyone. So uh, Chris covered structures and skills portion of our um, workshop output, and I'm gonna talk a bit about services and stakeholders. So as Chris explained, these are services we can provide both internally in terms of data we have within the library um, to use to improve our libraries, but also externally the services we can provide for the library community, uh, or for the community that, that um, of our users, and then also the stakeholders who will benefit from, from those areas. So in terms of drivers, so what the participants said are kind of driving us in those areas to, to want to explore being more data savvy libraries. Um, the fact that libraries are inclusive, cost neutral, and shared physical spaces we see as a pretty big um, driver for, for libraries' role in, in being uh, data savvy libraries. Um, the library acts as shared space on campus. It can be viewed as sort of the liter literal heart of campus, both intellectually and geographically. It can be viewed as a place for exposure to innovation and creativity and provides proximity to people, um, community members, and collaborations. So the library can play a significant role in building community around data science and can catalyze new partnerships. Um, the library is also representative of, of our kind of broader community, so creating an environment where people feel comfortable asking questions, so this idea of inclusivity where someone may not be comfortable going into a very technical environment to learn data science, um, coming to a place like the library where they're coming for other resources and other reasons may be a more comfortable place um, to learn these skills and, and play around with tools and technology. Um, a few drivers that I kind of clumped into one is this idea of um, data for informed planning and problem solving. In order to make informed decisions in annual planning, senior library and managers need to have tangible evidence to validate operational decision making future investment and staff deployment. So um, this evidence can be, better, can be gathered through data collection, data analysis, and insight. And then if data is collected for a while, there's interesting longitudinal data analysis um, that could be valuable. So data science approaches may shed light on otherwise hard to see or understand problems in the library. So for instance, um, even something as simple as gate counts can shed light on um, difficulties in terms of uh, decisions about whether to resource certain desks um, and um, um, hours of operation, things like that. Another driver is the campus use of metrics to demonstrate impact. Institutional administrators are collecting metrics, performance indicators, and other evidence to demonstrate impact and to raise the profile and influence national and international rankings. So, um, so so data science is sort of being used throughout the campus and what role uh, could the library play um, in supporting that or uh, working with the institution. Um, increased, another area is just the increased use of data science um, in the classroom. So data science has pervaded almost every discipline and data savvy skills are used in many professions to increase efficiencies and gain insights. So this means researchers and students on campuses need support as they learn these skills and use them in whether it's educational programs, research projects, or even for um, like personal exploration. So keeping up with evolving needs of our users is obviously important for libraries. So um, equipping librarians with data savvy skills increases their ability to support this data focused um, area. And then uh, another driver mentioned at the workshop is something that I'm sure we're all familiar with, which is that you know, libraries play a role facilitating collaboration across disciplinary 
um, areas on campus and data science is becoming a very kind of interdisciplinary um, space. So again, another area where libraries could be uh, supporting. Um, in terms of barriers, I think um, what we, we saw um, over and over again, um, though I think this is changing based on the type of library, but this idea of the silo effect being seen as sort of staying within the library and you know, how, how could we uh, sort of rebrand as, as a organizations that are data savvy when we at the moment um, may be seen as more of like a siloed or um, within like a, a fortress. Um, but I know many libraries that, that are not um, like that at this point. Um, I think there was also another concern about scalability. So what we see with research data management and digital projects is often one-on-one -on -one work um, is, is kind of what happens with, with a researcher, with the research team. So our workshop participants were concerned about, you know, what if data, data science, what if we offer data science services, how do we actually scale those? Kind of connected to that is resources. Obviously, I think this is a, 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 a pretty common um, concern. Many libraries ask, um, what should we give up or do less of in order to take on um, this area? Another uh, barrier that, that came up in the workshop was around credibility and image. People may not have this image for librarians, this image as uh, part of the data science or data savvy um, teams on a campus. Um, though I, I do see this as potentially a great opportunity to rebrand the library in this capacity. Folks also mentioned experience. Um, if librarians are not doing this research themselves uh, firsthand, that again, this goes back to credibility and image. Um, how were they able to kind of help the research process? Um, and then another thing brought up was sort of library culture and how doing some of these projects um, and, and doing data science might mean having to break some of the traditional rules. So I also have a few um, exemplars like Chris did. I'm, uh, just for, for time reason, I'll just sort of talk about um, one of them, though there's, there's many, and in our report that we will um, have in uh, January or early February, we talk through several of these exemplars um, and our case studies. So at the Carnegie Public Library, Pittsburgh data librarians have been helping the public to use and reuse open government um, and civic data, um, which are accessible from the Western Pennsylvania Regional Data Center. The library has run a data day with the aims of changing the public perception from open data to public data and enhancing public data literacy. Plus, they also run a speaker series with some um, really interesting speakers, um, data scientists, and um, and, and data artists, so just sort of having that speaker series to get, to get um, citizens and interested people aware of um, what's kind of happening in this space. So as Chris mentioned, we have a, we have a report and a roadmap. Currently our report is with um, the other participants of the workshop. We wanted them to have time to comment um, and get back to us before we uh, packaged it all up and, and gave it all um, to the public, but this is um, our kind of close to final draft of our roadmap. Um, so one of the things we wanted to do was then take some of the actions and recommendations that came out of that uh, workshop and actually turn them into a roadmap and look at short-term, medium-term, and long-term things the library profession um, and the library education uh, part of our profession uh, can do to make libraries more uh, data savvy. So the roadmap covers the four facets we talked about, structures and skills, services and stakeholders. Uh, we also have an area called scan because there were several actions that were kind of more of an environmental scan type of thing. So as you can see, and so it ranges from short term, medium term and long term. So everywhere from just highlighting success stories as an easy way to talk about what is already happening in libraries to uh, repositioning the MLIS as a long-term kind of thing. So we, we're trying to look at all the different things that need to be put into place to, um, to make this happen. 
So we noticed some common themes that we, we want to reflect on and we do reflect on in the, the report. Um, all of these areas were, they were sort of pervasive and important, so we created sections for, for um, each of these areas where at the workshop, whether it was sort of unspoken or spoken, um, each of these areas kind of covered um, discussion points that just sort of uh, cut across all parts of um, the, the workshop. So again, I don't have a, a ton of time to dive into each of these areas, but um, I'll talk a bit about the, the ethics and values area, because I think that that's something, again, that we sort of saw um, pervade a lot of areas and, and is, I think, especially interesting to Chris and I. Um, so when exploring the needs of researchers doing data science, we learned that there are many unanswered ethical questions and concerns that no single department is tasked to triage or support um, researchers on in, on most university campuses. And if anybody heard me speak last year at CNI, this was um, the topic of my, my presentation there. Um, new and complex data sets raise um, challenging questions, ethical questions about risk to individuals that are not sufficiently covered by, um, by data science training, by ethics codes, or institutional review boards. So the use of publicly available data, corporate data, and government data sets in research projects may reveal human practices, behaviors, and interactions in incidental or unintended ways, creating the need for new kinds of ethical support. So researchers and students using these data in their research are navigating issues and making ethical decisions in ways that are not really taught in their discipline. Um, many have only their peers to turn to for difficult questions that have essentially like long-term impacts on their research and potentially their reputation. So we see research librarians as one set of actors within a support network that university researchers rely on during their research. And the values of privacy, ethics, and equitable access to information are core to librarianship. Making librarians a unique partner for researchers and for others who are part of the campus support network. Um, at the same time, there's, there is an international conversation about ethical use of data that, that the field should be participating in. Um, there's an opportunity for librarians to find their role in supporting researchers navigating emerging ethical issues in their research. So a couple of sort of tangible ways we talk about that is offering triage services um, where librarians can take a role of providing sort of this triage service for researchers who are unclear where to turn because that often um, in a research project I did last year when we interviewed um, researchers who were sort of dealing with these emerging ethical issues, it was often that they just didn't know where to turn. There wasn't, there wasn't clear, um, there wasn't really a, a, a roadmap yet um, for, for these emerging ethical issues. So, um, so librarians can offer a network of support and provide background legwork to save researchers time. Um, they could expand their role to help with privacy and ethical decision making as it comes up in their research. Um, but also I think a maybe even simpler role that libraries can play in this area is as amplifiers. Um, libraries can host a series on ethical topics in research or partner with the work of campus organizers or campus organizations such as you know, ethics institutes like Carnegie Mellon Center for Ethics and Policy, Technology and Society, um, or kind of these research institutes like University of uh, California Berkeley Center for Science, Technology, Medicine and Society. Uh, there's a lot of cybersecurity initiatives with concerns around privacy happening on um, university campuses. So we see that as another potential role for a data savvy library to be able to participate in, um, in those conversations and put on events and um, and stuff like that. So our next steps for, um, for our project is um, getting out our final report um, and also going on a, a road show to discuss the project and gather interest. So um, we're kind of kicking off that road show, I guess, by, <laughs> by being here. Um, if you join our mailing list at datascienceinlibraries.org, um, You'll know where we're going to be talking, and also um, we'll be sending out the the final report um, initially through that list. 
We hope to convene future meetings on data science in libraries where we bring together not just the workshop participants. Uh, we saw those participants are people who are really kind of leading um, and around sort of that, the edge of leading um, uh, work in this area, but we would like to hold an actual convening of those who are, who are interested in data science in libraries and those who are, um, uh, you know, those who can like showcase some of their interesting data science projects. Um, we're looking at potentially an annual meeting, rotating. Um, we had talked about it being sort of in line with some other existing conferences like ARNL or, or something else that, um, that is out there and established and could help that get going. We're also looking at exploring opportunities for improving discovery of data science educational resources. So um, trying to, to centralize and, and make um, discoverable so that people are not reinventing the wheel. Um, it's kind of like putting together like a repository of a lot of the educational resources. We also think it's really important because we weren't just looking at training. We're not just talking about training interested frontline library staff. We're also talking about the importance of this management gap we had mentioned at the beginning, which is um, we want to ensure that leaders in libraries think about how they can be data savvy libraries and how they can then um, use the, the uh, librarians and the staff they have who, who will now learn these skills. So uh, we'd like to find ways to share our report and maybe create uh, modules with some of the leadership institutes that exist in the profession to help us think about how we as a profession could create data savvy libraries. And also we're looking at great, uh, gathering training programs and discuss um, shared and community programs. So again, sort of bringing together um, what programs we are aware of and making sure that they're tailored to the needs specifically of libraries. So we have a lot of people to thank. Um, you don't have to read them all, but um, you can check that out later. So these were a lot of our participants at our um, present at our uh, workshop, and also those who contributed um, some pretty amazing case studies. Again, those will the case studies will also be wrapped up in our report, so you'll be able to see some real world um, examples as well as kind of what what we um, see as next steps. Okay, so um, again, I want to thank IMLS. Um, there's the URL. Um, Liz and Matthew couldn't join us, but I wanted to make sure you knew the other participants um, who were leading this um, initiative. And we have a little time for questions, if anybody has any questions. <laughs>